Hey everyone, my name is Sven Middelberg. Welcome again to the CUDA Developer Tools video series. In the first episode of the series, Robbie introduced you to the Ansight Tools ecosystem. He explained what tools it offers and what a typical profiling workflow looks like. In this video, we will focus on Ansight systems, which usually marks the starting point of every profiling journey. As Robbie explained, Ansight Systems allows you to trace any NVIDIA GPU accelerated application to create a holistic, easy to understand and visually pleasing timeline view of the whole system, including all available hardware resources and active processes. This helps you to pinpoint performance issues and identify optimization opportunities. There are many possible reasons why performance might suffer. There might be some CUDA kernels running on the GPU taking too long or some processing step on the CPU that is the bottleneck. Likewise, it might be disk I.O. or a CPU-GPU copy over the PCIe bus that can be optimized. In addition to performance investigations, Ansight Systems is an ideal debugging tool for asynchronous GPU compute. Today I want to help you getting started with Ansight Systems. I will show you where to get it, how to trace your NVIDIA GPU accelerated application and walk you through all the different settings that allow you to customize what is being traced. The latest and greatest release of Ansight Systems can be downloaded from the Ansight Systems landing page. Here you will find installers for various profiling targets. There's one installer for profiling on Linux workstations and servers, and another one for profiling on Windows workstations and gaming PCs. There's also an installer for profiling our Jetson and IGX platforms for embedded compute and AI at the edge, and the fourth one for our Drive products, which is our platform for autonomous vehicles. There is even the option to profile a target system remotely, and the compatibility metrics will tell you which target system can be profiled from which specific host system. As you can see, although we don't support profiling NVIDIA hardware on Mac systems, Ansight systems on a Mac can be used to profile remote Windows or Linux target systems. Running the respective installer will guide you through the installation process. On my Windows machine, I already have the latest Ansight systems release installed, which is version 2023.2 at the time of recording this video. Let me now open Ansight systems and show you how to trace your NVIDIA GPU accelerated application. At first launch, Ansight Systems will already have created a first project for you. On the left side of the window, you will find the Project Explorer, which enables you to organize your traces into different projects depending on your needs. Let's rename this project to something more descriptive than Project 1. Let's rename it to Hello Ansight. On the right, we can see the project window for the currently open project. We first need to specify a profiling target, which is the system on which the application of interest will be traced. If you want to trace on a remote machine, here's where you can select an SSH or USB connected profiling target. SSH is the right choice for Docker and remote Linux instances. USB is mostly targeting our Jetson and Drive platforms. Since I want to trace locally, the target system is the same as the host system and I will select the local host target for tracing. Now a number of options show up that allow us to customize what is being traced. The only mandatory setting is the target application, that is the executable that will be traced. For the sake of demonstration, let's trace the vector at CUDA sample that is available on our NVIDIA GitHub page. In a nutshell, this sample calculates the element-wise sum of two input arrays by copying them to GPU memory, running a CUDA kernel that does the math and copying the output back to CPU memory. There are no command line options with this sample, but if there were, these could be specified here as well. As you can see, Ansight Systems automatically sets the environment's working directory to the directory that contains the executable to be traced. Of course, this can be customized as well if needed. The command line and working directory are the only mandatory settings you need to specify, but it is best practice to adjust the other settings as well to capture only the events and metrics you're interested in to minimize tracing overhead. Every event or metric captured adds some overhead that not only depends on the event or metric itself, but also on the executable being traced. Therefore, it sometimes makes sense to trace different events and metrics in multiple runs to minimize that overhead. All the different events and metrics you want inside systems to trace and its sampling frequencies can be configured below the target application tab. There are plenty of customization options, and typically you want to enable only a small subset of these. Explaining each of these settings in detail is beyond the scope of this video, but check out the inside systems user guide for detailed explanations. To put it briefly, all of these enable or disable collection of metrics associated with different computing graphics APIs, like CUDA, Vulkan, OpenGL or DirectX. We can trace all kinds of CPU and GPU activity that helps you to gain a better understanding about what is going on within your application and to identify performance bottlenecks. Worthwhile to mention is certainly NVTX, which is a library by NVIDIA that you can use within your application to mark specific events and sections within your source code and make them visible within Ansight systems. 
We will cover MBTX in detail in a later part of the series. For tracing the vector at sample, let's enable the collection of samples related to the CUDA API and nothing else. As you can see, in my case, the collection of CUDA samples was already enabled, so we'll leave that checked and disable everything else. On the right, we have different options to limit the extent or time range of the trace. Since sample collection and analysis can take some time, this is useful if you want to trace only a specific time period of interest and avoid sampling all of the application startup and shutdown time. Since the vector at sample we are about to trace is quite minimal, we are good with tracing the entire lifetime of the process and don't select any of these options. All that's left to be done is to click the start button, upon which Ansight Systems will run the specified command line, collect all the samples configured and process them to generate an Ansight Systems report. While doing that and waiting for the command line to execute in Ansight Systems to collect and process all the samples, I want to point out that all of this can be configured and accomplished without the GUI, using the Ansight Systems command line interface as well. Once more, refer to the user guide for detailed instructions on how to do that. Technically, an Ansight Systems report is a database of collected samples and derived metrics. Using the ENSYS command line utility, this database can be exported to a number of different formats, including SQLite, Arrow, JSON and others. While this is certainly targeted to more experienced users, the export functionality enables custom mining and visualization of the collected data depending on the user's needs. However, the Ansight Systems GUI has a nice and easy to navigate visualization already built in, which is a report's timeline view. The timeline view is a temporal visualization of the things happening on the system for the period of the trace, with the horizontal axis progressing with time and collected data being stacked vertically. This provides a visually pleasing representation and makes it easy to temporarily correlate what is happening on which part of the system. We will have a dedicated video on the timeline view and on how to navigate it, so let me just quickly zoom in and show you what the timeline for this simple vector add sample looks like. In the Threads tab we see the single CPU thread the application runs on and all the CUDA API calls it executes. First it uses CUDA malloc to allocate GPU memory for the input and output data. It then uses CUDA memcopy to copy the input data from CPU to GPU memory. It proceeds to launch the vector at CUDA kernel that calculates the element-wise sum of the input data and writes the result into an output array in GPU memory. This output array is copied back to CPU memory with another call to CUDA memcopy, and lastly CUDA free is called to clean up all previously allocated GPU resources. Note that all of these are CUDA runtime API calls happening on the CPU thread. To see the actual copies of the input and output data on the PCIe bus, as well as the CUDA kernel running on the GPU, we need to open the CUDA hardware tab at the top of the timeline. Let's zoom in a bit further, and we see the two input vectors being copied from CPU to GPU memory, the blue block corresponds to the CUDA kernel running on the GPU, and here is the GPU to CPU copy of the output buffer. By hovering over the individual blocks we get more information. For example, when I move the cursor over this first mem copy from CPU to GPU memory, a tooltip is displayed that provides useful information like the copy's duration and the chief PCIe throughput. For kernels we get data like the execution time, register and shared memory usage, occupancy or the CUDA stream the kernel was launched on. As mentioned before, we will have a dedicated video on the timeline view, so I won't go into any further detail here. While the timeline view is certainly the view you will spend most of your time with, Ansight Systems offers three other report tabs you might want to look at as well from time to time. The analysis summary provides a high-level summary of the report. In this case, we get information about the profiling session, the system that was traced, trace settings, the Ansight Systems version used, and a bit of debug information. The Diagnostic Summary tab shows important messages Ansight Systems reported during tracing. If anything went wrong, this is also where warnings and error messages will show up. Lastly, the Files tab points to a couple of config and log files, for example the logs written to the standard output and error streams. That's it for today, I hope this was useful. We only scratched the surface of what Ansight Systems is capable of so far, so stay tuned for the next videos of the series. Thanks for watching.